Well, hi everyone, and welcome to today's um, important session, which is understanding the role of the head in the golf swing. Uh, it's an often debated and talked about thing within the swing. Uh, how important is the head? So what do you think, Pete? How important is the head? Well, the six inches between the ears is certainly very important. Okay. <laughs> uh, to have that in the right space, but also understanding how the head is positioned at address and how, it's, how it moves throughout the swing. Uh, you know, trying to keep your head still can be really, can really freeze up your goals. It, it'll cramp up your golf swing. So uh, I know you've got a, a number of points to really cover here. So I'm looking forward to uh, going through them with you, Chris. So let's let's get on to steady head versus a still head. Steady head. So let's have a look at what is a still head versus a steady head. Um, first of all, the still head is misunderstood and should be really steady head. What what can you explain about that? Right, so facing, if I was going to swing this way, when you set up to the golf ball, when you're in the right posture, depending on the shots you're playing, uh, with a wood, your head will be quite a bit behind the ball. With an irons, it'll be, it'll be closer to just behind it. And for your short stuff, your head should be pretty well steady over it. But when you're turning in a golf swing, because your head is not stuck right over the middle of your spine, it's slightly forward. When you're turning, you're actually turning around your spine. So your head will actually be moving or appear to move while the spine stays centered. So in the back swing, my spine stays on the same angle. My head's not moving, but it, it, it appears to move because it's not the middle of the spine. Now in the downswing, as you come down through the ball, it'll appear to move back, but it's just coming back in front of the spine. And then as it comes forward, after you've made good uh, impact zone, which happens while you're well back, it's still on your right foot, going away from your right foot, then your head must be allowed to move and by steady, it means it, it's stable. It's not bobbling all over the place. And while you're turning smoothly, your head is allowed to, 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 to move in a smooth manner. You're not trying to get stuck over the golf ball. Yes, yeah, so, so let's have a look at, at that. So um, the head down and eye on the ball is, is also misunderstood and can put the head between the shoulders peak. Yeah, and the steady look, head. Is, the steady head is really what we're after. But just explain what, you know, how that interpretation can upset someone's posture. Yeah, look, when you're looking at the golf ball initially, and you're watching, watching golf ball, you're watching, watching the golf ball. Ideally, till it's well and truly struck, you feel like you're watching it. If you try to keep your head eyes on the ball down here all the time, you, it's definitely going to cramp up your follow through and put a lot of strain on your back. Uh, also, when you uh, try to keep your head eyes there, you, you're not actually watching the ball. If you go to watch the ball, the ball's already going. So once you've hit it, you're allowed to watch it. You know, it's just a case of not getting up there too soon. Uh, keeping your eye on the ball doesn't mean keeping your head still. It just says watch the ball, hit it, and then watch the ball. So uh, your head definitely has to be, able to be have the freedom to go with the flow in the golf swing. Absolutely, Pete. So if we have a look, uh, what, why, why is it important to get set up properly with the head behind the ball? Um, basically, the head remains behind the ball for driving, centered just slightly behind for irons, and with chipping and pitching, it should be in line with the ball and the weight into the left side. Just explain why those, and they're slightly different positions, aren't they, depending on the golf club? Yeah, just let me grab my driver and my, say, my five iron. 
Right. Now, firstly, these clubs are all different lengths and different lofts. Now, the driver that they've done in, in more recent times discovered that if you can hit the ball slightly on the upswing with the driver, you're going to get maximum carry and maximum run, roll on the ball. So to play the ball opposite your heel or your instep positions the ball definitely well ahead of the your head. Now, the swing center, you're basically turning in a barrel behind the ball. And as you fire down out and through the ball, your head will definitely be behind the ball until well after you've hit it, it'll still be behind the ball because the ball's way out there. But where the ball was on the ground, you're definitely, your head must be allowed to move up and finish up here to avoid number one, a bad back, and two, to keep, allow you to stay in balance. Because your head's very heavy and if you try to keep it there, it's very easy to lose your balance. So having a a ball position forward for the driver is very important. Now with the iron, you're going to play the ball a little further, more between the middle and your front foot, because you want to catch the ball not on the upswing, you want to catch trap it on the downswing. The low point in the swing, we looked at it in the static, is approximately opposite the left armpit, the your front armpit. And so you want to trap the ball in the downswing. And, and low points here. Now, this would position your head more or less uh, just behind the ball. So the ball would probably be off your left, maybe off your left ear, uh, somewhere between your nose and your and your and your and your left ear. So that allows you now to hit the ball with a descending blow, and then the head must be allowed to move. Don't try to hold back and scoop it up. Now, with the lofted clubs that you're going to pitch and you want to get the ball up in the air, the first thing you want to do is to, to get that backspin on the ball. You want to be hitting it definitely with a descending blow and you want the club shaft to be leaning this way as you hit the ball. If you've got the ball too far forward, like with the driver, it won't be leaning anywhere near as much forward but so to get that lean and to make it easy on yourself, this is where you position the head. While the ball might be in the center or slightly between center and your front foot, you're not going to be over here. You're going to be leaning left. And this brings the head so that your eyes are either over the ball or your nose is slightly ahead of the ball because you want to be hitting the ball down and through. That's, I'll demonstrate it hitting this way. You won't see the ball position, but you'll see what my head does. And it's just a little pitch shot. Now, my head didn't, definitely didn't, I, I was watching the ball. I didn't put any particular attention on trying to keep my head still. I watched the ball and I allowed the, the release of the club head to move my head. So once it's been hit and the ball positions uh, either a little bit further back and your head's a little further forward. So you, once you've hit the ball, you, you must allow your head to come up to here rather than trying to hang back. Very important, yeah. Pete. Um, let's have a look at what it, what problems it uh, creates if uh, you know what a head that's in the wrong place will do to your goal shots because we've talked about the right place but um let's have a look at just the common things that golfers might do so a head that's too far behind what will that do to a, a golf shot pete well if it's too far behind with the driver the tendency will be that you will you will either well, hit it, you'll hit it oh, definitely on the upswing, but you'll have a tendency to pull the ball because you, you just can't keep in the shot long enough. The tendency is the more your head stays back, the less extension you can have through the ball. 
Uh, of course, you don't want to be moving the other way, but at this moment in time, we're talking about the head too far behind with the driver. Uh, you'll have a tendency to hit the ball to the left. Uh, or, and then after a while, you leave the club face open, and then you put a big start to become a slicer. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you hit if you hit the ball, uh, you get in with an iron shot, playing a five iron. So here, the ball's just between centre and the front foot. And my head's just my, just behind the ball. Now, if I if I have it too far behind, the, the big tendency with the irons is you'll hit the ground here, or you'll skinny it or top it coming on the upswing. You, you won't. You'll be less likely to hit the ball with a descending blow. So you'll scoop your irons if and uh, if you're lucky, or you'll hit behind them and duck them, or top them. So that's not much good there. Now with the the wedge, the, the when you're going to pitch the ball really high, first of all, get plenty of loft. Don't, don't try to put your head back here and lift it this way. Uh, but your standard pitch shot, where you really want to compress the ball and get good backspin. If your head's too far back, the tendency again, you're going to hit behind the ball or you'll scoop it on the upswing uh, or you'll top it. So when your head's back here, it's it's a recipe for getting a lot of mishit shots. All right, Pete, uh, let's have a look at the um, next part, which is the, the head that moves in front of the ball, especially driver. Ouch. hit a lot of shots now we see this quite often when we're coaching people their, their head gets in front of the ball which results predominantly in right shots because you can't square the club face up um quick enough because your head's in the right wrong position so anybody that struggles with the ball going off to the right um in the cutting action you can bet that your head's probably uh, definitely getting ahead of the ball so Say you're playing the ball from a good position, you've got the ball up the off your front foot, but instead of having what we have is a correct spine angle tilt, you actually have your right side a little high and the head then moves a bit forward. So that that by setting up that way you'll you can you'll you'll definitely be blocking it out to the right, or then you have to scoot or try to flick at it to stop it going out there. The person that sets up nicely turns behind the ball well, but then instead of just hitting down out and away from themselves, they come a little bit outside in, the head will have a tendency to move ahead. So for people that feel that they have a problem with their head moving forward too much, first thing to look at is the path. Let's get that out the right. So when I swing back on the right path, which is not out here or in here, it's hands and hips take it back together this way. Now, as it's coming down, if you come down on the right path, your head can stay and you can hit away from your, your head, away from your chin. But if you're coming on the wrong path, that's a recipe for getting the head to move out ahead of it. Uh, the other thing that sometimes people think they have to do to get power, they think they have to transfer their weight. They slide too much sideways. And of course, in the process, not just the lower body moves sideways, but the head gets there too. And then you're in trouble. A good golf is all about turning in a barrel and uh, keeping in balance. And to do that, you don't want your head moving sideways, up or down. We're going to talk about that probably next. How'd you know, Pete? <laughs> yeah, because we had a rehearsal. All right. <laughs> okay, so another. You know, uh, can, I, can I just stop for a second? I just want the folks to know why uh, we have it all written down like this. Is Chris doesn't trust me to stay on on the on the topic, so he, he keeps me to time this way. And it's a it's a good way going into 2023 to be be on time. So that's my plan is get right to the point. So back to you, Chris. Love it, Pete. Um, yeah, so the head, when it dips down in the backswing, uh, causes a lot of mishits as well. And sometimes you see this, you know, the head lowering down. Um, what kind yeah. of mishits would that cause and how would you fix something like that? Right, look, yeah, well, basically 
it usually drops down for for one or two wrong ideas. Firstly, if you're trying to keep the club head low to the ground and you're taking it away with your your hands or your arms or your shoulders, th that'll pull the left shoulder down and, and then and consequently your head has a tendency to dip down. Also trying to take the club straight back on the line, that makes your shoulder go down, your head dip down in the backswing. So then unless you come back and time it perfectly, you, you're either going to come down and hit a fat shot, sky the ball, or you, get, you come up out of it and uh, top it. So you've got too much requirement of great timing. We look at it from this angle. If you try to keep the club going low to the ground and straight back, the left shoulder dips down. Or if you want to keep trying to get your left shoulder under your chin, that's another thought that uh, gets, gets your head to drop down in the backswing and then you have to come up or face the consequences, hit back shots and sky balls, all sorts of uh, miss hits. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so at the, the end of the day, we just want to have a steady head um, and be aware of where our head is, is and understand that you know, other things like Peter talked about, swing pass, things like that can also affect uh, the head. So, Pete, before we finish up, any closing remarks you want to make there? Uh, well, basically, all this, the, the, the best way to get a steady head is to, one, understand exactly how the body should pivot. Number two, understand how the hands and arms will promote and help that body pivot. And uh, basically, by, by drilling in the components of the pivot and the hand and arm swing, and just get, taking that concept that golf is, a, a, is a, a circular motion, that club travels in a wheel. It, you're not trying to go down a straight line. Uh, it's, it's on an inclined wheel. And your, your head just happens to be in the center of the, or so it's pretty close to the center of that wheel. If you keep your eye on the ball, that's the best way to keep your head steady, I think, uh, once you've got good mechanics. Mechanics. Yeah. It, it, it also um, helps you get you get focused as well, doesn't it, Pete? So, you know, steady yeah. head, turning in a center, turning in a barrel can get you very focused. Just start bullseye, hit the 15 meter mark, right, on the, on the umbrella. Okay, you yeah, know what, uh, by keeping your eye on the ball, it does, besides, uh, when your eyes are on the ball, it will certainly promote a centered and steady head, plus a focus on what you want to really do, which is to hit that golf ball. And I like to watch the dimples on the ball when I hit it. Bingo, up to 20. Uh, so that really does, as you said, it, it helps you mentally. It, it, while you're looking at the ball, you can't be thinking about too many other crazy things that, that you need to have drilled in beforehand anyway. Using the laws of accuracy. Yeah, the laws of accuracy. Um, I think uh, in golf, success breeds success. So if you have success doing something and you keep repeating it, it allows you to get successful on the next um, stepping stone. Um, in our Breaking 80 program, that's what we're going to be focusing on the, in the first part of the year is just getting um, success with um, small, smaller shots and then gradually building our way forward. Um, Pete, what can you say about success and you know, if you're not having success, you've just got to dumb it right down and bring, bring come right down to a, a step where you can have a lot of success and then build it back up again. Pete. Correct. Yeah, look, uh, having uh, run the Breaking 80 program for the best part of about nine months now, uh, what we've discovered is that 
accuracy is not just hitting the golf ball to its target. There's a step before that, that you have to have accuracy in, in the mechanics that you, in your golf swing. And uh, so if you can apply the laws of accuracy to a simple thing like taking the stance, then if you do it in baby steps and, and just do it until you do one little piece, like putting the club behind the ball, looking at the target, tap, 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 swing up and just taking the grip. Now, if you just do this enough times with attention and intention very accurately, before you know it, you're taking a good, correct grip without having to think about it. So the laws of accuracy when applied to learning the drills is really major. And that's what we're going to also focus on. Once you've got the technique, it's no good having great technique unless you know how far to hit the ball. So what I've got here is a series. This is at one meter or one yard, two, three, four, and all the way out. Uh, and it's no good as I was hitting those ones out to the 15 or 20. If you've done a lot of it, then you get much more accurate at that distance. But if you're going to start, rather than build accuracy out there, start with these little shots. This, this white board that's just right here at one, one yard. And that landed, I didn't hit the board, but I landed about one inch short of it. Uh, watch the ball, hit that ball. Oh, it's the second time I got lucky. Now, that's a very small target at one yard. Uh, you probably wouldn't start with that size target. That's what we'll discover as well. If you're going to build confidence, confidence really comes from, co comes from competence. So that's what, what, that's what we really want to build is real competence at hitting the ball short distances. And then you, you, you quickly build your confidence out to longer distances. So it's, it's an amazing program when it, you apply it to most building drill uh, and technique, and then building the ability to hit the ball to certain distances accurately to the target. And that's what golf's all about is, is set, you know, learning to hit the ball certain distances from putting, chipping, pitching, to your target, accurately to the target. So that's what we'll be doing in the uh, Laws of Accuracy um, program, which is part of um, Breaking 80. So those of you that aren't on the Breaking 80 program, I'd encourage you to give it a go. And those that are here on the Breaking 80, um, look forward to uh, a, a great 2023. So yeah. thanks everyone for, for being on the path for the last uh, year or, or years. <laughs> And um, Thanks. look forward to 2023. Look, there's one final thing I just want to pass on for the for 2022. Uh, and it's a message that Peter Thompson gave to me last time I saw him before he passed away, sadly. Uh, he said to me, he, tell, he said, tell your son that golf is not a game of how far, it's a game of how near. So hitting the ball the right distance leads to building it to the right direction and then when you get good technique and good distance control and accuracy it's amazing how the power develops so uh, that's where we're going in 2023 we're going to build power through accuracy and which sort of, which sort of goes against the uh, mainstream doesn't it pete so um... it's to totally the opposite to what when they take the top end guys, that they're already arrived there. Mm. Most of us, we're missing all these baby steps on the way up. And uh, Peter Thompson really had it nailed. Golf is a game of not how far, it's a game of how near. And uh, so for 2023, and as of from now on, play golf with that in mind. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Right. Good on you. Happy New okay. Year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Thanks Sanjay. Thanks, See ya. Thanks. Um, Namaste. 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 <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Michael, Matt. everybody. Super. And Thanks. Matt. There you go. Michael Phillips, too. Fantastic. <laughs>